So, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. This morning's message, the title of it will be When Just Thinking Is Not Enough. When Just Thinking Is Not Enough. For those of you that want to follow, you need to get Colossians. That's the C-O-L, not G. C-O-L, Colossians. Chapter 1. You'll need Romans chapter 8. Colossians chapter 1. And Romans chapter 8. When thinking just is not enough. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 21. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 21. Hear the reading of the word of God. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Again, once you were alienated from God and were enemies... In your minds because of your evil behavior. The message says, you yourselves are a case study of what he does. At one time, you all had your backs turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts of him, giving him trouble every chance you got. (laughs) When I think about that passage, and and those of you that that have spent any time with me, you know Colossians chapter 1 is one of my favorite verses, chapters in the Bible. Why? Because it is one of the verse that made Jesus become deity to me. It took him off the cross and put him back in heaven because it says that everything was created for him and by him. And it says that he has authority over all. All things, all beings in heaven or on the earth. So that's all I needed. Once I was able to get a real clear picture of who Jesus Christ really was, it it transformed my thinking and my relationship about Him. Because so often all we think about is Christ is the baby. Then we think about Him on the cross. We think about Him dying, and all those things are necessary for our salvation. But you and I do not live based upon Him being a baby. We don't live based upon Him being on the cross. We live now based upon Him being in heaven, sitting at the right right hand of God, constantly making an intercession for who? For me and you. That's how I live. I live knowing that every day of my life, Satan goes before God and says, There's that Ricky. Look at what he's doing. Look at what he's done. And I have that forever playing in my mind. And knowing that I know without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to do something stupid. Hello. Hello. I'm going to do something stupid. I'm going to make a bad choice. I'm going to make a bad decision. I don't call them mishaps. I don't call them mistakes. It's a bad choice. I am constantly making bad choices. Anybody there with me? Always making bad decisions. Yes, I don't know what it is. I can't get out of my own way sometimes. I don't I don't know. But but when I think about it as I study it, the answer is right there in the text. The first thing you got to grab hold of is it says that we are alienated, alienated from God. Now, I know we go to church and you wouldn't think that you and I would be alienated from God because we go to church, we pray, we do all these religious things. So there's no way I'm I'm alienated from God. Well, let's look at it really for what it really says. 
Don't you understand that when you and I were born, we were excluded, separated, we were against God, we, we, we basically deserted God. Listen, it even says that we were distant from God, but this one really struck me. We divorced God. We divorced Him. We didn't want anything to do with God. Why? Because we were living life, what? On our terms. We're living life the way we wanted to live life. Think about your younger years, those of you that dare to. Think about when you were just young and dumb. Hello. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I was just young and dumb. I really didn't know much better. I was just young and dumb. And I did anything and everything I was big and bad enough to do. Anybody there with me? And what happened? We were enemies to God. Not because of the things that we did, just because we were born. Try that on for size. <laughs> Try that on for size. When the psalmist said that from my mother's womb, and matter of fact, in sin my mama conceived me. Hello. In sin my mama conceived me. So when I came out, I was jacked up. I didn't stand a chance from the start. But yet, by my own choices, by my own actions as I got big enough, I remain alienated from God. Why? Because I remain what? In my flesh. See, that's something you got to grab hold of. When you are in your flesh, you are totally against God. I told you to go to Romans chapter 8, didn't I? Let's go to Romans chapter 8. <coughs> Romans chapter 8. And let's look at verse number 7. It said the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Somebody say that with me. Nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. Do you understand what that says? If you are living life by your flesh, if you are living life by what you think, if you are living life by what mama and grandmama and everybody else believes, and not by the word of God, don't you understand? You cannot please God. We, one of the biggest problems we, we have is we put people, our own thoughts, our own perspective, way up here. Way up here. And in reality, it should be way, 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 way lower than that, way down here. Why? Because you and I, and our natural ability, and our natural selves are against God. we got to just grab hold of that and understand that when you are living your life apart from the Word of God, apart from the Spirit of God, you are living your life in your sinful nature. Your best intentions could not have gotten you into heaven. Your best deeds could not have gotten you into heaven. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Your sinful nature, you just being born, put you against God. Then it got even worse. Enemies in your minds. Oh boy. Now I know we are brilliant up in here. I know that. We are brilliant. But the problem is, enemies in your mind... That word enemy means to be hostile, hatred, antagonistic. We are enemies to God. We hate God in our flesh. Why? Because, listen, we don't want our parents to tell us what to do. No less some God that we can't even see. A God who says he answers prayers, but yet he don't give me what I want. A God who says he'll never leave me nor forsake you, but yet I feel so alone. How many of you have ever been in a crowd of people, but yet you felt so alone? Hundreds, thousands of people. Be in a stadium full of people and be alone. Well, does the Word of God really work? Because He said He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never be alone with God, right? But yet you're feeling alone. Maybe it's something you talk about. Think about this. You are hostile. I want to read this one for you because I, 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 I love how the word just proves itself. You don't have to turn here. I'm going to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 starting with verse number 17. <coughs> 
So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continued lust for more. What we always do is we focus on just the fact of lusting, We focus on the hardening of the heart, but what caused the problem in the first place? The futility of your thinking. The futility of your thinking. Well, Pastor Ricky, I don't know what futility means. Well, I'm glad you asked. I don't know what it's mystic or what. Yeah, that other word, Eddie. I knew Eddie would know that one. So I said, let me look up a couple of these for my buddy Eddie. Because me and, me and Eddie, we are, we we here, and he's going to say, Ricky, what is futility? And I'm going to tell him what it is. What futility is, is worthless, useless, empty, and at the very end, add the word frustrating. Things that cause you, that you think about, to make you feel worthless. Things that you think about that cause you to feel useless. Things that you think about that cause you to feel empty. And things that you spend all your time thinking about that make you so frustrated. Do I got your attention now? Do I have your attention now? When thinking just is not good enough. It's just not enough for you to think positive thoughts. It's not just enough for you to grab scriptures. I love it when you, when you talk to people that are just getting saved and they got like four scriptures. That's all they got. They got like, like I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthened me. They, they, oh yeah, they get this one too. Uh, great is he that is in me, but he that loves at the end. They, they get like four scriptures and they run with it. <laughs> and you think based upon those four scriptures, they got it together. Based upon because they will throw them four scriptures. Where are you out with them four scriptures? When in reality... It takes more than you knowing those four scriptures. We focus on Romans chapter 12 when we say, you know, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will know what God's good and perfect and pleasing will is for your life. But what we don't understand is that that even though you can transform your mind, and yes, you need to take the word and, and, and put it in your mind, and you need to quote those scriptures, but don't you understand that that's not where you and I live. You and I don't live in quoting scriptures. You and I live in our thinking. We live in that place where nobody wants to go. Because you and I will get by ourselves. And what we, what will we do? We will think ourselves into a real bad frame of mind. We'll get to thinking about our circumstances. We'll get to thinking about what we want. And we'll get to thinking about what we don't have. And we'll get to thinking about this other person. And we'll get to thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And next thing you know, you don't put yourself in a real bad pickle. Some of us cause our problem. Listen, nobody got to say nothing to us. They just got to look at us. And we'll think about what they're saying. And next thing you know, you got yourself an enemy. All because they looked at you wrong. By the way you think. Your perspective. The way you see it. Look at somebody and say, thinking just might not be enough. What you got to grab is this thing that says, in the futility of your thinking. And the worthless, empty, useless frustration of your thinking is where you and I live. Anybody want to challenge that? Anybody want to challenge that? See, that's the problem. That's the problem. It's not that the Word does not work. It's just that you and I don't live there in the Word all the time. We don't live in the Spirit all the time. We stay up where? In our heads. We stay in our heads. We stay in our heads. And because we stay in our heads, he ended up saying it causes evil behavior. You know, I have the privilege of working with the ladies here in the beginning. And I have the privilege of teaching them on a 
almost daily basis, some simple principles. And one of the things that I try to get across to them on a regular, regular basis is as women, you're always talking about your feelings. You base all of your decisions, you base all, everything about the way you feel, your emotions. And you do this, and, you, and, and then everyone else is held captive by the way you feel. When in reality, it's think, feel, choose. It's really not so much the way you feel, it's what you've been thinking about. See, that, that's what really trips you up. It's not so much the fact that, that see, see, hold on, hold on, hold on. 1 Peter chapter 2, 11 says this here. It says, when you give in to your flesh, when you give in to your sinful nature, you cause war against your soul. When you hear the word soul, I always want you to think of three things. Your mind, will, and emotions. I want you to think of your thinker, feeler, chooser. Whenever you do something, or whenever you stay in your head too long, you will always end up doing something that is going to cause war against your mind, your will, and your emotions. It stays in your head. You get to beat yourself up. You're feeling guilty. Then you get this shameful identity. Well, I'm just to this. I'm just to that. And then you read all these scriptures, and you say, well, I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven, but what? I cannot forgive who? Myself. You're spending too much time up in here. Spending too much time thinking. Instead of spending all that time thinking about what you've done, get your word and start finding scriptures that say, I am. I am. I Get a new identity instead of staying in that old one which constantly torments you. You are constantly living in your thinking which causes war against what? Your soul. Yeah. And when you spend that much time in bad thinking, you can't help but act wrong. You can't help but act wrong. You can't help but act like you're not forgiven. You can't help but be mean-spirited when you think about everything that was done to you over the years and everything that you've done. If you spend all that time thinking about that, you can't help but feel in a way. The futility of your thinking. Worthless, empty, useless, frustrating. Once you were alienated from God... And were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. You spend that much time in your head, you're going to act a certain way. Evil evil behaviors are produced by evil thoughts, which is from our sinful nature. You just think evil because that's just where you came from. And heaven forbid you were then raised in an environment that was negative. Raised in an environment where mama and daddy was always negative. Raised in an environment where you had no love. Raised in an environment where you were not treated as significant like you had any value. Raised in an environment where you did not have security. You did not feel safe. Now all of a sudden you got all of this, and here's how it works. You say, well this is what I should have. This is what God says I should have, but when I look at my reality, I don't have those things. When I look at my reality, I don't, I don't have what God says I should have. Well see, one of the things you've got to grab hold of, church, is that our sinful nature will never have the best of God. If you're looking at it from your sinful nature, from your flesh, from your humanity, you will never get these things over here because these things are what? Given through the Spirit. When the Holy Ghost begins to move into your environment, all of a sudden, stuff begins to shift. You see things differently. That ever happened to anybody? 
you had your mind set on something, but you allowed the Word of God by the power of the Holy Ghost to infiltrate your thinking, to infiltrate your reality, and all of a sudden, you instead of looking and saying how defeated you are, you saw that all of heaven is lined up with you, and you got happy, you got encouraged, you got victorious, and all of a sudden your attitude changed. Why? Because you went from thinking about the natural to the spiritual. That's, by the way, what the word transform means. Remember when, when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and they saw him talking with Moses and Elijah? Keep in mind what happened. The word says that he was transformed. He went from being a physical person to being a spiritual being. Hello, listen, and I'm going to say that again. You go from being a physical person to being a spiritual being. Transform. How many of you are being transformed? You are moving from being this touchy-feely, emotional mess to being a spiritual-minded person. That's what has to happen. We're going back to Romans instead of chapter 8. We're going to chapter 7. I need you to hear... This struggle. Romans chapter 7, verse number 20. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Anybody see that? So, I I need you to understand... If you're having a hard time doing the will of God, if you're having a hard time just doing what the Word says, if you're having a hard time getting out of your flesh and getting out of your emotions, I want you to understand that sin obviously is still reigning within you. The Holy Ghost ain't leading you. You're still in charge. You are still in charge. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in the members of my body. Here we go. Waging war, waging war against the law where? Of my mind. And making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretch I am. What a mess. I want to do right and can't. I want to serve God. I can't. I pray, but all of a sudden, there's still this battle going on. And some of y'all get trapped in this. Where I prayed about it. I have dealt with it. Why is it still there? Look at somebody and say, because. Because. You might not get an answer to everything. There are some struggles you're dealing with that you're going to take to your grave and you will overcome them in death. There are just some things we're just not going to win like that. So instead of you spending all your time wondering why this one thing won't leave, just, just say to yourself, His grace will get me through it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to worry about this one thing that won't leave me alone. When you got all these other things going working for you. Ain't that what we do? We got nine things working for us. We're going to focus on that one thing that ain't. Mm-hmm. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. I'm going to read that again for you. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. How in the world are you going to overcome your thinking? The text just gave it to you. You got to let your mind become a slave to the law of 
of God. You must make your mind a slave to the law of God. How do you do that, Pastor Ricky? Well, let me give you a couple answers here. It's the word meditation. It's the word meditation. Joshua 1 8. Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be a prosperous and a successful person. Psalms 119.59 I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I've considered, I've taken the time to think about how I'm living. Anybody ever do that? You think about how you're living and you don't like the way you're living. You don't like what you're seeing. Guess what? Somebody say, put the word on it. Ah, put the word on it. And we got to get that word and put it where? In you. Because once you get that word in you, then that word becomes active. And that word then will begin to move you in the direction of holiness and righteousness. I can go a little bit further. Psalms 119.11 I have hidden your word where? In my heart that I might not sin against who? You, God. I'm not, if I know, listen, I hear people say, well, well, listen, you need to treat me like you want to be treated. Wait a minute. The word says, if I love the Lord God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, and then love my neighbor as myself, then I might be able to treat you right. See, 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 you more worried about folks treating you right, and they don't even love God. How can they love God when 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 we don't love you when they don't love God? You gotta understand, you gotta put this thing in order. If they will put the word where? In their heart, then the Lord can convict them about dealing with you. As long as there's no word, as long as the Holy Ghost is not living on the inside, you can see. You should, you should, you should treat me. You should love me. You should, you should, you should. All day long. And you're talking to a corpse. It's only when the Word of God becomes alive. And the Spirit of God gets on the inside of somebody. That they even care about your feelings or emotions. They don't care about that. They're still living for them. Come on church. They're still living for them. They're still living for them. They're still living their sinful nature. thing really works. Just thinking isn't good enough. Just thinking about the word ain't good enough. You got to get the word where? On the inside. And then you got to be in a position, listen, that the word actually matters to you. Because people will put the word on the inside, but the word don't matter to them. They're not concerned about living right. They want to be seen. They want to be seen. So application as we close. First thing we need to recognize is there was a time that we were enemies to God. And you better recognize if you don't stay focused. And if you don't spend time with God on a daily basis. If you don't read the word of God on a daily basis. If you don't keep yourself pure and holy on a daily basis, you can become God's enemy again. Yes, you can. Well, I'm a Christian now, Pastor Ricky. That can never happen to me. You a liar. Start doing worldly things and see how much you pray. Start sinning and see how much you focus on God's presence. You try to get away from there as quick as you can. If you think God going to show up in a person or somebody or the word or anything else, you go the other way. Anybody in there? You run from the presence of God. You run from the word of God. We can all become enemies to God again. That is an option. Point number two. We better recognize that Christ has reconciled to us. To reconcile means to reunite to eager expectation. We left off at 21 where it says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. 
Verse 22 picked it up and said, But now He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in the sight without blemish and free from accusation. And if you continue in your faith, somebody say continue. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. So what you got to say, you are reconciled. You have been reconciled from all of that mess. You've, God has eagerly expected you. You have been reunited with God. How? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Number three. We must maintain our faith in God. We must maintain that faith in Christ. Why? Because it just said that Jesus Christ was the one who reconciled you. He's the one that got you back in contact with God. Therefore, you must maintain a relationship with the Christ. You must constantly be mindful of the gospel. You must keep it in the forefront. You must think about what He has done for you. You must keep that relationship in its proper place. And not let it be something that we just watch on TV through the passion. But bring the passion close to you. Close to you. And finally, it takes more than just changing your thinking. You must get it in your heart, not just in your head. It must move to your heart, not just to your head. So I have a question. Who in this room is struggling with their thinking? Struggling with staying out of their own head. And is putting them in a bad way. When I say in a bad way, it ain't putting you in a, it ain't making you sin yet. If you let it hang around, hang around long enough, it will. But you, you, but you understand that you're thinking, just thinking about God, just thinking about it ain't good enough. How many of you in here can, can attest to that? And you, you're struggling. Well, I want to join you in prayer. That it will move from being in your head to moving in your heart. Because if it does not get out of your head and move into your heart, you're not going to grow. You're going to stay stuck. You're going to stay stuck. You're going to stay frustrated. Come. Leaders come.